with the UPP government, Antigua and Barbuda has been securely positioned in the luxury compartment of our express train to economic growth and stability and peace and prosperity for all. Antigua and Barbuda's finance minister has said the country is facing a grim financial situation. With more, here's Debbie Ransom. In a speech in St. John's, Finance Minister Harold Lovell said there'd been a 25% fall short in Antiguan government revenues, with key sales tax and tourism receipts down. He indicated that there would be budget cuts, saying that expenditure has to be brought into alignment with revenue. But he said the government would seek to spare those most vulnerable to the economic downturn. The situation, Mr. Lovell said, was grim. And the minister is canvassing the public and business for ideas on social and economic reforms needed to help steer the country out of what he called the eye of a perfect storm. This party is for the people of Antigua and Barbuda. Brothers and sisters, over the past five years, you can see the work that we have done. And we have come before you to stand on our record. Five years ago, when we came to you, brothers and sisters, we told you that we needed to transform this country. And when you look at our record over the five years, I say that we have transformed this country. We have seen development in all different areas. When we promised the taxi drivers that we would make sure that if they wanted to get a taxi, they could get it duty free. We have done that. And so we make sure that every taxi man in this country Every tax woman in this country, if they want to get a duty free for their taxi, this government has given it to them. No questions asked. That is progress. Brothers and sisters, because of the progress that we have made with the economic development, we have allowed jobs to be created. I don't have a question. I'm a UPP supporter, but all I want to see, they're wicked and they don't have any heart for the poor people and them. Whilst Harold Lovell, Baldwin Spencer and the rest of the UPP continue their theft, mismanagement, raping and ripping off of our twin island state. They maintain their cover-up on their corruption and true financial situation of Antigua and Barbudre. These lies, on the finances and state of the economy are designed to give our people hope. Even though the UPP well know that they have destroyed our economy so badly, that there really is no hope under their governance. Here is Lovell, lying as usual, trying to deceive Antigua and Barbuda people. We feel that come the end of this year, we're going to begin to see an uptick. This is also borne out by the fact that I can say we have had more inquiries about investment and more serious indications that people are willing to come and invest in the past, I would say, the past three months than in the previous two years. And that's because internationally we're beginning to see the capital markets flow again. We're beginning to see um, confidence um, increasing generally um, around the world and so to me the good news is certainly there we are going through a difficult patch i mean i'm aware of that and i'm very sensitive to that fact but at the moment i think i can say that come later this year early next year um, once the tourist season kicks in and based on 
what I'm seeing in terms of um, good investment projects, I believe that we will begin to see the turnaround. Lovell now says, by the end of 2011, there should be an upturn in the economy, because the UPP are getting more queries of investment. Where are the hundreds of investors that UPP promised in good times? Why will investors come now times are bad? Furthermore, a Euro money report placed Antigua and Barbuda in the bottom six countries throughout the entire world for investors to invest their money. How can this increase the demand for viable investment? Simple answer, it won't. Love will light again. Unfortunately, every time the UPP get their hands on taxpayers' money, or grants and loans, they waste it on corrupt projects designed to enrich themselves. This problem has got so bad, even their own supporters are starting to speak out against it. Mr. Daniel, um, I know that you said you weren't referring to you weren't, you weren't going to refer to the letter that, that you wrote because it's, it's it was a private document. Mm. But however, because of the leakage, Mr. Daniel, it said that you were you, the, the leak said that you were approached by a government minister and offered a bribe of a hundred thousand dollars. Mr. Daniel, that is an illegal act. If you were bribed, Mr. Daniel, you need to, 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 to bring to the public who bribed you and or tried to bribe you and for that person to be brought to justice, sir. You finished? Do you care to comment on that, sir? Well, I can't comment on that for the simple reason that um, the letter that I wrote, I have requested um, for certain investigation so um, in terms of that sort of release that will have to come via that investigation the next question I want to ask you quickly um, Mr. Daniel openly said that he gave you a letter a note a script of one uh, whoever your ministers try to bribe him, and you get that letter. Would you care to tell us who that minister tried? Name is? I am not aware. Of Mr. Daniel of any you? minister. I am not aware of any minister bribing anybody. Did Mr. Daniel give you a letter? Yes, he did. And he did mention it him. He did mention, but I am saying to you, George, mm -hmm. that I am not aware, and uh, the minister himself did not disclose to me any individual minister who had offered him a bribe. But then you say he gave you the name. No, sir. I never did. One job. Contractor number three who did a building. The contractor said that he was not aware that there should have been a tendering process for a job of that magnitude. The job was estimated at over $3 million. The project should have been approved by the tenders board, but was not. There was no bidding process for the project. It is important to note that the contractor provided both material and labor in the execution of the project. The estimate that was submitted was the one agreed upon and accepted as the final cost of the job. The contractor felt that he lost a lot of money on the job as the original instructions were changed significantly. Hence, he had to remove a portion of the already built structure to accommodate the changes. He, however, noted that he worked closely with the engineer assigned to the project in order to get the project completed. The contractor confirmed that for this particular building, there were no drawings. The final structure is very different to the original with even changes in material use. He has not been fully paid for the project, and this has been verified. Contractor number four, who did a building? Contractor number four built a structure estimated at over $8 million. He, like other contractors, indicated that he was not aware that the project should have been secured through a tendering process. He was told by officials at the Ministry of Sports what type of building was required. Given the information, he had plans drawn up and the building was erected according to the plans. To his knowledge, the plans were not submitted to the DCA for approval. The contractor said that he prepared an estimate for the job and negotiated with the project manager. The final figure was less than the original <laughs> estimate. The contractor also did work on a portion of the fence. When asked if he had received the full value of contracts for the building, he said that less than 100,000 is outstanding. 
He, however, noted that he was never paid for preparing the drawings. The contract price included all material and the equipment used in construction of the building, including windows, air conditioning units, and seating. But if I may just say that this has been done in an effort to explain to the people of this country and to explain to this honorable house how the projects were executed. Clearly, there are matters there from which we must take lessons, but I think coming out of it, there is no evidence of culpability with respect to anybody having acted corruptly or anybody having acted in a manner which, in my view, would require that this matter be taken further. We are support that. We never support that. Wrong can be right. Wrong are wrong. You may pop you on, lock them up. If you catch the problem, lock them up. If you catch you up the problem, lock them up too. And say everything from them. I want to tell you something. When last have you been to Newfield? Uh, a, a long time. You must drive over the place, you know, the, the hill going down, they call it Mark's Hill. Mark's Hill. Oh. Mark's Hill, instead of going up Lion's Hill. Uh, you take you the right? You go straight over the concrete road. Oh, you go straight instead of turning by the, the little shop there? Right, so you go straight over the hill. Uh-huh. And you're going to see the new field fence. You know, that, that, that totally right. I mean, don't make no sense because some people find the time that the part of the bill, the only thing going there, go cheap, tackle hard. <laughs> they get locked in. <laughs> and me tell us some serious, serious money spent on that. That that, that particular thing is over a million or close to a million. I don't have my document in front of me, but you can go through it and you will see how much that particular thing they cost. And nobody, absolutely nobody going in that place over there to play no kind of sports whatsoever, sir, people. Mm-mm. It's a shame and disgrace, and I keep on saying it, these people take we here in Antigua for a ride, a big one too, trust me. And I do hope and trust that the people that are listening to you all will understand when we say certain things. Because some people have put out, oh, you back this and you back that and back that. But I'm saying to you, sir, it's a disgrace. When they keep talking about the world crisis, that is what I'm thinking like this. It is not that. They picked up enough money that they could have balanced, balanced this country. With the UPP government, Antigua and Barbuda has been securely positioned in the luxury compartment of our express train to economic growth and stability and peace and prosperity. I think the UPP has been derailed. Honest to God. You think what? I think they've been derailed. Derailed.